What's up everyone, it's your boy Nornrad89 here bringing you another video. For today's video we are going to be talking about Cobra Kai Season 5. I finally binged all 10 episodes. I am all caught up waiting for Season 6 to drop. So like I said, today you're going to hear my positives, my feelings, negatives, all that kind of stuff on Season 5. That means these are just my opinions and I would love to hear from all of you in the comments section. Share your thoughts on Cobra Kai. Now that it's season five, you can share your thoughts on the whole show. You know, get all down and dirty, spoilers, everything. What are your favorite character arcs, your favorite characters, some of the best moments that you enjoy and what are some of the worst moments that you disliked in the show? Please, I would love to hear from all of you and let's get down to this video now and talk about Cobra Kai season five. Roll it. The first thing I must say real quick about Cobra Kai Season 5 is I think this is the furthest removed, the most different than any of the previous four seasons. I would say the first four seasons, they're not cookie cutter, but they kind of follow a very similar theme and stuff like that. You know what I mean? A template kind of thing, the way they execute their seasons. And Season 5 is the most different, in my opinion. This is definitely the season that has the most stakes, the biggest threats going on. Terry Silva's just growing and growing and now wants to take Cobra Kai global. So, yeah, this is the season where you kind of feel the weight of what's happening and all that kind of stuff. Let's get into some positives right away is that I think the acting Terry Silva, like that acting by that actor does a great job as that character. And being basically the main villain, the main antagonist for the show that we've had so far that's grown into it. I know he wasn't introduced in season one, but... Just the fact that he's grown over these past few seasons and what's happened and transpired. He's definitely, like I said, grown into the main antagonist and villain of this show. And yeah, Terry's definitely trying to take Cobra Kai into some dark routes for sure. Another thing that had me grinning from ear to ear with this season was Johnny's storyline. I love the fact that Johnny, he's pretty much involved in every side storyline or side plot. He has his, you know, his son, or not a son, a new child coming to the world with Carmen. So we got that storyline going on for him. He also joins Daniel's fight against Terry, you know what I mean? So, and he's got a storyline going on with Robbie and Miguel and trying to make them kind of unify together. But also we have the first, I believe it's the first <clears throat> two or three episodes. He has to go find Miguel in Mexico and he takes Robbie with him. So that's a really cool few episodes too as he's trying to track down Miguel. Miguel's learning more about his past where he came from and you know I can't blame him everyone deserves that right so uh, the fact that Miguel took that route and that path I kind of feel like that's the way they were going especially when he wasn't feeling the whole tournament thing and wanted to know more about his father and his mom wasn't telling him so I think that was like the most logical route to go but I like the fact that like I said Johnny is involved in all the storylines pretty much in this entire season. Another thing that's really awesome about this season is the fight choreography. They've stepped it up even more. Like I said, this season, yeah, it's got some wild stuff in it, like threatening stuff. Like you feel like people are actually going to get injured or hurt or they'll end up in the hospital kind of thing, you know? Like besides Miguel, his accident in season two at the end of that season, this is the most like threatening, most, you know, you feel danger for the characters when they're in the fight scenes in this season. And yeah, it's jam packed with a lot of stuff. This season, like I said, has so many characters and a lot of stuff going on. Let's kind of lead into the mixed and negatives because there is a lot I liked. Like one thing I did like too is that Amanda is consistently staying a very favorite character of mine. I still really do like Amanda LaRusso. She's great. Miguel's character is very consistent in the show and Johnny. I love his character. One kind of arc and character that I'm not really feeling that much is, you know, LaRusso. I'm not really feeling his character as much, you know, Ralph Macchio as Daniel. Like, it's just, it's kind of the same stuff, but this is the first season where he actually gets to kind of do something else with the character because he becomes broken down after Terry kind of attacks him from all fronts and all sides and then Amanda takes the kids and they go to her mom's house so Daniel really does get to do um or Ralph Macchio gets to do more kind of character acting in this season compared to the previous seasons. As I said, we're going to get into the mixed and negatives right now. And one huge mixed and negative with me is that there is a lot going on. And I love the fact that some characters are getting the shine. Like one, for example, is Tori. I love Tori's character. I love her story arc and I love what they're using and kind of 
really kind of cementing her as a formidable character and somebody who's climbing the ladder is one of my favorites because she's having quarrels and, you know, thinking about things and what is right, what is wrong. You know, she's just not, she's not just a typical one dimensional character. But then we have so much stuff going on that we have other characters added in like Kenny and Anthony's storyline that I'm not really gravitating towards. Like, I know it's cool to involve Anthony LaRusso. It's really cool to involve Daniel's son. And I know Kenny is kind of the new main dog for Cobra Kai. He's like Terry's, you know, pupil, the main star. But I'm just feeling like it's just, it's not a storyline that I need. And that's the problem with season five and season four that I've noticed my main big problem is there's a lot going on. They're very bloated seasons. And there could be some episodes where you go times where you just kind of learn about things or you hear about things or a certain arc is started and then you don't even return to that character for a few more episodes or towards the end of the show or for one example with season five the kids are kind of very much in the background the adults are more of the main stars in this season and I understand that you know it's mainly about Daniel it's mainly about Chosen you know, Johnny having to deal with, you know, a new baby coming and getting Miguel and Robbie together. But yeah, all the kids are basically sidelined in this, like Hawk, Dimitri, you know what I mean? Everybody, like they're just background characters, in my opinion, and they don't really come into effect until that last two episodes of the show or last three episodes. So that's what I kind of disliking about this season. One other thing is Crease, like actually the Crease storyline. I feel that's another one that's kind of tacked on. I mean, we need resolution for Crease and what Terry did for him and did to him and like kind of revenge of what's going on while he's locked up and stuff. But I feel like, like I said, it's just so much added stuff with him and the Stingray storyline and Terry. So, but I feel it is gripping. It is actually gripping. Like I'm actually having a little bit more fun with Crease in this season than I did in the previous season. So yeah, like, you know, we'll we'll see, like I said, how season six wraps it up, especially with the fact that Kreese did escape at the end. So yeah, we're gonna, it's, you know, we're leading into a path where all the worlds are gonna collide pretty soon and let's see who's left standing. Another thing is we didn't, I didn't need the introduction of Barnes. I understand his tie to Terry Silva and um, his tie, or Terry Silver, and his tie to Cobra Kai and the history he has with Daniel. But I feel like this show's really going, it's really stretching a point where it's like every character, every person that was involved in some form or fashion in the movies has come back. And I know for hardcore, hardcore Karate Kid fans that love nostalgia and they love seeing these characters back, they're thoroughly enjoying it. They're loving it. And I totally get that aspect. But I feel like some of it is very much like writer's convenience or just like, what are the odds? Like, are you kidding me? Like sort of thing. And I understand like Barnes, they might have had Daniel and him might have had some unresolved issues and they're trying to tie him in. But they're bringing him in into a season that's already bloated enough that has storylines going on with Johnny, with Miguel and his dad, with Carmen and Johnny, with... Daniel and his family and all this stuff and now you want to add in another character that we just met this season I mean he's been from a previous movie I believe Carter Karate Kid 3 but now you want to introduce him into this season and it's like come on that's that's the one thing that's kind of holding me back on really loving season five is just how much it's so kind of scattered it's all over the place in my opinion I'm still having a great time with this show and I'm having a blast and these are some really enjoyable moments, some great characters and like I said, I'm I'm really glad that I committed to going through all of Cobra Kai and like really binging it before Cobra Kai season six because I'm really going to get a chance to enjoy season six and the fact that I recently seen all five seasons, I'm really going to get the full effect of the character arcs and what has happened and stuff like that and like I said, I got a lot of other Cobra Kai videos planned excuse me I got a lot of other videos planned and other stuff that I want to do probably have some collab videos as well talking about Cobra Kai but yeah as it stands right now season five I'm kind of lukewarm on this season I'm actually thinking about maybe binging all the seasons again like in a row even though I just watched them but even again before season six comes out I don't know I know we got last of us coming out but I really want to soak up every ounce and every minute of Cobra Kai and like really by the time we get to 
that season ranking video and the collab videos, I want to know my affirmed feelings on the seasons and stuff like that. But yeah, I'm like I said, I'm still eager to see what season six has to offer because the cliffhanger and what's happening and I want to see them take down Terry and how are they going to really cap this off because I believe this is going to be the season finale, the final season of this show. So like I said, I'm eager to see where they're going to take a lot of these characters because now that I've invested so much time with Miguel and Robbie and Johnny and Daniel and Amanda and Samantha, I really want to see good endings and great stuff happen to all these characters. I know we might not get the best endings for every character, so we'll see. But that's typically not the Cobra Kai way. They're not really that kind of way I've noticed about the show. We have some dark moments and some very emotional moments in the show, but it's very realistic and grounded. But I've noticed that they've kind of tried to keep it a nice way for everybody, you know what I mean, where they wrap things up. But now, like I said, with the biggest threat of Terry out there, how are they going to be able to take him down? And are they all going to be able to get their happy endings? We'll find out. So, but like I said, I would love to hear from all of you in the comment section. Let me know what you think about Cobra Kai season five. What are your feelings on going into season six? What are your expectations for season six and all that kind of stuff? Because like I said, this is going to be the last one. But most importantly, I want you all to have a safe and happy day. Peace out.